just see whether we've got any broken limbs. The front limbs are intact. The hind left leg is broken. So when the project started, really, it was driven by the fact that otters can be a useful um, environmental sentinel. Um, because they're top of the food chain and they range across um, aquatic and terrestrial habitats, um, they can pick up environmental contaminants in their tissues. And by analysing those tissues, we can measure the concentrations of things like PCBs, organochlorine pesticides, which are very harmful not only to otters, but also to a very wide range of wildlife and also to humans. So we saw the disappearance, really, of otters from across much of England, um, and populations survived only in the, the far southwest, in Scotland, parts of, parts of Wales and in East Anglia. At really high levels, um, some of these contaminants can affect things like the reproductive biology, so impacting on, on how many young are produced. So we were using the otters as a means of, of monitoring um, concentrations of those contaminants. We get otters sent to us from all over England and Wales, um, helped by members of the public who report them, and then coordinated by the Environment Agency in England, Natural Resources Wales in Wales, um, and they're couriered to us. OK, so we've got an otter coming from Carmarthenshire, um, and the first thing is to weigh it um, before we open up the bag. So each animal has it comes in, we tag with an individual reference code. Um, so this is actually the 2000 and number 2201. So we've, we've had well over 2,000 otters over the years. So we're looking for things like ectoparasites, which very often are found around the ears. Yeah. And then we check carefully to see if there are any fighting injuries. Otters um, can be quite aggressive um, and when they and when they fight they target the anal genital area um, and yeah the tooth wear indicates you know he's not a, a young animal um, but actually that probably only means about three years old and then we open the otter up so I make an incision all the way along from the throat um, right down to the, the testes So we take a huge range of tissue samples. For contaminant work, for example, we take liver samples, um, so they're analysed for contaminant concentrations. We examine the kidneys. Um, we're looking at those, um, sectioning those to look for kidney stones. Uh, the adrenal glands we look at um, and we, we measure the size and look for any abnormalities because they can be an indication of um, physiological stress. From our work analysing the DNA of the otters, we can see that there are four regional populations between which we don't see much genetic mixing. In terms of the significance of that, now the view for conservation really is that we should be trying not just to maintain species, but also the genetically distinct populations of those species. So it might mean, arguably, that we don't try and connect up those populations. And certainly it means that when we um, rescue individuals from the wild, we should return them to where they're found and not put them back in another population that, that maybe is genetically different. When the project started in the early 90s, um, there were really a very few otters um, found dead. And primarily these were roadkill. Um, so I think in 1992 we had maybe mm, less than 10 otters. Um, now we get nearly 200 otters every year, um, so the project has really grown and partly that increase I think is because of greater public awareness, but in the most part it's due to the expansion of otter populations. They're doing really very well now across England and Wales, so sadly that means that more of them are getting killed on the roads.